It is the first day of the week and oh, I missed my workout and I almost wasn't gonna vlog even though I told myself I was going to start vlogging on Mondays and posting again on Sundays like I used to half a year ago. And I was like, no, this is reality. Reality is I stayed up too stinking late and because my brain was just like, and I overslept my workout, but it's still gonna be a good day. If you're new here, hi, my name's Amber Calderon. I am a former teacher, TPT seller, blogger, all that fun stuff. I was recruited to lead social media influencer marketing and content strategy for Nearpod and Vocabulary for five years. And now I am the head of marketing for another ed tech company called Clayful, which provides on-demand text-based coaching to every single kid and gives every single kid someone to talk to. And, and I'm so glad you're here. And if you've watched my videos before, dang, like, I'm sorry, I like ghosted you. Like, that's trash. <laughs> I want to show the reality of what I'm working on and why or how it's applicable to your business. And the first one is feedback. So I am redesigning the family's landing page for Clayful Health. And in order to redesign that feedback, like I'm not a mom, how can I redesign something for a specific persona if I cannot truly tap into that mindset. What I did was I posted on my Instagram stories asking people if they were a parent that I would love to get their feedback on the current page. I do have a meeting in 15 minutes with a parent who I'm gonna ask for feedback for the landing page that I'm building and I need to, I just need to do a bunch of like little random things. leads me into the entire video which is how to leverage feedback for your products and services and how to not be afraid of feedback which can be tough a lot of times we tie a lot of our work to our self-worth and who we are i was just talking about that in my last video getting feedback from your community is so important let's dive into customer feedback Customer feedback is probably hands down one of the most important aspects of your business, but it often gets overlooked for so many different reasons. Customer insights can support your product development, your marketing, your operations, so many different facets of how you can make decisions if you just actually listen to the customers that are coming to you. We have a tendency to forget this whenever we're working on our own business. We're so focused on the tree that we can't see the forest, and it's so true. You're trying so hard to beeline to that end goal that you fail to include the people that matter most when it comes to building something and it's the people that are consuming your content that you want to purchase your products. It's not only listening to your customers, it's also applying those insights, actually taking what they're saying and making it actionable because they're literally telling you what you want. They're doing your job for you. They're giving you the marketing advice. They're telling you how to make it easier on the user. So it's in our best interest to build for that so then more people like that ideal person purchased our products. This also helps us evaluate what we're working on so then we know whether to start, stop, or continue that. And so this is something that I'm actually working on this week as I'm hopping on a lot of calls with parents, as I mentioned earlier, to build a landing page. I want the parents to know, like, and trust us. I need to make sure the messaging is very well-rounded and this is so important for our business. Like, how many times have you or have, like, have you seen or had a friend who's in the TPT land who has created a product and they think it's gonna do really well and it tanks did they ask their audience what they probably wanted in that particular product maybe it was missing or maybe the product you've created it's not selling as well as you want it's because it's missing a key ingredient that would unlock potential for that audience but you don't know unless you ask because we don't know what we don't know and one thing that i'm learning is it never hurts to ask and lately i've been over asking the worst someone's gonna tell me is no no i don't have time for that and you know what that's okay that's not gonna hurt my feelings but at least i know i can ask so i've talked in different pockets of feedback but let's specifically talk about why it's important for your business just a little more detailed the first is, does your audience even want that product? But what if there's something that you're going to expend a ton of energy on that doesn't actually make sense for that moment? 
why don't you ask people as they're coming into your DMs or post on stories which thing are they particularly interested in and build for that first. Your audience is going to realize, wait, this person actually listens to me. I have a say. It's not just them talking at me. It's now a dual conversation. And that's so powerful because you know how much I speak about community and wanting to really unlock that with you know be on the camera i want to talk to you in the comments i want to hear what you're working on what you're struggling with where you have a blocker and how i can help unblock that and it goes by i have to prompt you to do that right just like you have to prompt other people to share so knowing does your audience even want that particular resource maybe it's not in that moment or maybe it's not in the way that you envision it and the thing is and i've i talked about this when i talked about like my learnings as head of marketing in the mexico vlog but it's like your v1 is not a hundred percent and when you start including other people to help you know, give their feedback, which can be really vulnerable because giving feedback is at its core, if we're not strong enough to receive the feedback, can make us feel that we're not of 100% worth in a way of like, oh, it's not good enough because there's more that can be done. But here's the thing, there's always more that can be done. Even the best chefs, whenever they're cooking their food, I bet there's some chef down the road that's like, well, you could also do it like this. And it's taking this feedback and then preparing the best meal for your audience. And the way it works is like, do we wanna justify the workload before it happens, right? Make sure that you actually have some social proof that it's gonna work. Like for instance, I built Teacher Marketing Academy and before I actually built the online course, I did two months of one-on-one -on -one online coaching. It was paid coaching and I worked with quite a few teachers, but I also learned quite a bit in the process. And a lot of the things that I shared with them that I realized, wait, I should build for that, went into Teacher Marketing Academy. And then I asked them, what are some things you wanna see? And that's why I consider that my Lighthouse course because it's literally everything someone needs to run a content strategy. That now, I have realized through building that, that that may not be what somebody needs right now. They might need something more tangible, which is why I then created the email marketing course if you just want a specific thing done. And then now I'm slowly building out smaller products that are quick wins because maybe they don't, people are not ready for that huge leap for Teacher Marketing Academy. I feel like it is, even though I know and I feel in my heart, it is a game changer for your business that doesn't mean somebody's ready to take that leap. And I need to keep in mind all mindsets when I'm building my product. And that goes into point two is, are you building a product with your audience in mind? Keep in mind, what are they struggling with? Right now, I'm currently building a booster blogging checklist and it was originally supposed to just be a checklist. That's it, just a quick checklist of things that you need. And upon talking to more teachers, I realized they want something a little more robust. So I'm spending more time creating now a guide ebook kind of feel, not technically a course, but a lower lift that still gives a lot of information. Because I realize upon talk after talking to teachers that they don't need a check just a checklist because they need to know what actually to do to check the box. If I had just posted the checklist, I wouldn't have made that much money. It would have been a really low dollar amount and it would have probably tanked because people wouldn't know what to do with it. And now that I'm actually providing tangible advice within the guide, whatever I'm gonna call it, I haven't decided, I can charge a little more and I can feel confident knowing that teachers will actually be able to do something with it and not just check it off because to check off means they're in my mindset where they already know what to do. But I wanna support people that don't fully know exactly what they're, how to do certain things. So that means I have to teach a little bit. The third way that you can leverage customer feedback is after a product has already been published. Just because you press publish doesn't mean that it's completely done and you never have to touch it again. I get it, it took forever for that product to come to fruition and finally be published. Trust me, I completely understand. I also understand the importance of reiterating on your own work and using feedback from your audience to make it even better so you can increase more sales. So one way to do this is to ask people who have purchased your product, what did you like? What did you not like? And it's okay, let them rip it apart. You don't have to take every single idea. And some ideas may be more long-term, so you can't action it right away. But there are some that you're like, wait, 
I could do that and I could probably do that in the next week and so you want to knock it out. I know it can be really tough to seek out feedback. It can also be really tough to receive feedback and it will always be tough if you don't step out of your comfort zone to ask. And some people are gonna tell you no, that's okay, but more than likely people are willing to give you feedback because they wanna help and at the end of the day, we all wanna be helpful. Let's talk about how you can get customer feedback. Let's start with one that you might not agree with right off the bat because it's like, <gasps> you're asking me to do what, but I swear it is so nice and it is hopping on calls with your audience. I know this can feel super intimidating and for a while I used to be intimidated and like I said, I'm building this landing page for Clayful and I just popped my scheduling link on my Instagram stories and I had tons of teachers agree to talk to me. If I hadn't done that, I would have spun my wheels for so long trying to create something that would come across jargon heavy because I'm trying to pack all these big powerful words in. And it's like, do more with less. The second is use your social media accounts. Ask people for feedback. Ask people to leave questions in the comments. Ask people, like put polls on your social media and ask certain things as you're building. If it's before the product has been published on TPT, you can also use it as a tactic to pre-sell or hype up your product before it becomes published. And then you're also editing and creating to what they want and they feel a part of the process. You can embed feedback forms into your product so you can really see what they liked about it and what, if they could wave, one of my favorite ways to phrase is, if you could wave a magic wand and add anything extra to this product, what would it be? And I really love that phrasing because it's not very negative and then they feel a little more comfortable to share because it's like, oh, in a perfect world, it would also have this, and it's not like, you should have had this. So that's a phrasing that you can steal. If you have an email list, which you know I love the power of a good email list, you can send a survey to your audience and really get them to be authentic in their answers since they're already typing or texting if they're opening it on their phone. And if you want, you can also say, I'm going to give five people a Starbucks gift card as a thank you for filling this out. I really appreciate you helping grow this community and helping me create products that better serve you. Shifting the mindset from away from you to more about the audience and how it's gonna bring value into their life. Let them feel that, and it's the truth, right? The more valuable feedback that they give to you, the better the products you're going to create and the better their life will be because they're going to have products that are gonna save them time. So it's more of thinking about it instead of like, I really need you to do this for me, this would really help me to like, let's build this with you in mind. What, like, what will save you hours in the classroom? This product, it has saved you X, it could save you three more hours if we do what? You know, let's, let's talk about it. At the end of the day, it's all about doing what's best for your business, doing what's best for your customer, and building and asking for feedback with them in mind is going to really just make it that much better. So today was not a very glamorous first day, especially because I overslept my workout, but it still, it still was a really great day. It still was a productive day. And now it's time to give back to myself, my mind, and look at Trixie. And Trixie is ready to eat her dinner. Okay, Trixie, you ready to eat your dinner? You ready to eat your dinner? Okay, come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, let's go. She is so excited. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Thanks for hanging out with me during my workday. I hope you enjoyed a tiny behind the scenes of what I do at Clayful. Next time I'll show a little bit more, but more importantly, I wanted to make sure that you got some good insights about how to leverage feedback for your business. So if you still have any questions about that, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're not already so you never miss a teacher marketing tip from me again. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye y'all.